Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and as you can see, I'm not currently playing Minecraft. I'm about to install it. That's right, this is Direwolf20's tutorial instruction video on how to install all the mods that I'm going to be using in my Let's Play series. Um, now, you're going to want to start with a clean and fresh Minecraft jar. So the best way to do that is go into your start menu here and look for, if you're in Windows 7 or Vista, you can just type right here. Otherwise, you're going to want to look for the run command. And you're going to want to type in the percent sign, APPDATA, and the percent sign again. And that'll open up your app data folder. Now, if you already have a Minecraft install, you'll find a .minecraft folder in your uh, app data folder right there. You're going to want to back this up or do something with it if you're going to be starting with a clean Minecraft jar. Now keep in mind, if you removed your Minecraft folder, you're going to lose all your worlds, you're going to lose all your configs and settings and mods and all that other stuff. So only, you know, back this up, put it somewhere, do whatever you want. But you basically want to start with a clean and fresh Minecraft folder. So I'm going to delete that now. Yes. And go ahead and run Minecraft again. And you'll see that as soon as you run Minecraft, it's going to automatically create a new one for you. And you're going to not need to log in here. So I'm ready to log into my Minecraft game here. And you'll see that immediately it starts downloading everything it needs all over again. So this is going to download version 1.0.0 of Minecraft. Excellent. And as soon as it's finished downloading, it's going to launch the game and log you into the interface here. So you're logged in. And for those of you who don't know, your sounds and music are downloaded separately once you're already in the game. So you can wait a little bit here and wait for these things to all come down, or you can just go ahead and close out your Minecraft and they'll come down later. I'm personally going to wait a moment. So once all your resources have been downloaded, or you can, don't have to wait, you can go into your bin folder here. Now you're going to need to be modifying your Minecraft jar file. And the way you do that is you need some kind of zip program, be it WinZip, WinRare. I personally use 7-Zip. You can Google for this guy. He's a free program. You want to right click on your Minecraft jar and do Open Archive. And that's going to open up your Minecraft jar for you in a separate window. Now we need to install some things into your Minecraft jar. Let's do them all now. First step is to delete this meta INF. If you forget this step, your game is just going to black screen and it's not going to work at all. So delete that whole folder. Gone. Good. Now we can move on. Next up, you need to get to your Minecraft mods. That you First up, you need to grab your mod loader. Open up the zip file and extract it somewhere and go into the folder that extracted to. Grab all the files in there and click and drag them into your Minecraft.jar easy. Do the same for Mod Loader MP. Regardless of whether you're planning to play a multiplayer or not, you need to do this. You also need to do this with your Minecraft Forge. I'm currently using 1.2.2 and that'll go in there nice and easily. Next up we need to do Audio Mod. This will allow you to use sounds and special effects from any mods. I'm also going to be using too many items to test and to do some mod spotlight, so I'm going to be installing too many items. This is optional. I will not be using it in my Let's Play. You're also going to want to grab convenient inventory if, like me, you like how that works. Now, if you have too many items, you don't need this mg.class file. You only need convenient inventory. However, if you don't have too many items, you need both of these files in there. Excellent. Finally, if you're using Railcraft, you need to download the Minecart Compatibility Layer Client. This guy is going to let Mine Railcraft work, so click and drag those in. Perfect. Now everything should be there. At this point, you're going to want to launch Minecraft and log in. So I'm just going to go into single player here and create a new world. doesn't matter what you name it, just let it build something for you. And once it's up and running, we'll see that everything's working properly. A good way to test things is to use too many items. Now, I personally don't like using E for my settings, and I like to turn view bobbing off, because view bobbing with industrial craft quantum suit is a little funny looking. And I'm going to change my inventory to I. Those are optional settings, of course. Now we can open up too many items. See, everything's here. Everything's good. So let's go ahead and close out. And close out. So now we've got everything we need in the 
Minecraft jar done. Going forward, the rest of this install is pretty straightforward. We just need to copy zip files into this mods folder. And some files need to go in resources if the mod you're using has sounds or special effects. Let's get started. First off, I'm going to install Equivalent Exchange. Now the Equivalent Exchange zip file, when you download it, will be extract this EE and then the version number. You're going to want to extract that because Equivalent Exchange does use sound effects. You can simply copy the mods folder directly on top of your mods folder, or open up the mods folder in your Minecraft folder, and copy the Equivalent Exchange forward zip file in there. Perfect. The same for resources. You're going to want to open up the resources folder, and the resources folder here, and copy it in. You're going to get a warning here now saying that there's already a mod folder. That's, right. That's fine. It's just going to be copying new things in. You're not going to have to worry about that. And that's got Equivalent Exchange installed now. Excellent. Next up, I'm using Portal Gun. You're going to need to extract that as well. And you want to use the client version of Portal Gun because you're doing this in your client, not on a server. And you've got two folders in here, one called Place and Mods. Guess what you do with that? You place these files in your Mods folder. And Resources. You need to go to Place and Resources and copy this over as well. And again, say yes to the warning you're about to get. We've now installed Portal Gun and Equivalent Exchange. Excellent. Let's proceed to install the rest of the mods. This is pretty easy. We've got Buildcraft. You just need to copy all of them. I'm using 2.2.8. You want Craft Guide. That's what I like to use or you could use uh, Risigami's recipe book, either one. And industry, industrial craft and forestry. Excellent. Now I'm using Railcraft, and I'll get to you in a moment, Railcraft. But let's also grab Red Power. And I'm using both World and Machines and all that good stuff. Wireless Redstone and the additional pipes mod that Zelda has given us. There is a 1.0 version that someone else, the Stormbringer is his name, has ported over for us while Zelda is MIA. Once he's back, he might be taking it over. I'll definitely provide a link to this for you guys. And grab the Railcraft zip file. There it is. Just copy that into your mods folder. And let's not forget, of course, Buildcraft logistics pipes. Make sure to get that copied into your mods folder as well. Now we've got all the mods that we're going to be using set up in the mods folder. Let's go ahead and launch Minecraft. And you'll note that as soon as we log into Minecraft, two things are going to happen. We're going to get some new settings in here. Buildcraft and Red Power are going to build their config files, as well as a few other things are going into the config directory here. But we're going to have an error. More often than not, when you're using a lot of mods, you're going to run into block ID conflicts, and this is unfortunately uh, a downside to using some mods. And in order to figure out what's the problem, we can open up our mod loader text file here. Scroll down all the way until you find something that looks like this. Here is where your error is. And it's telling you that slot number 254, which is your block ID, is already occupied by Forestry when it's trying to add Zelda's chunk loader block. Well, that's an easy fix to make. We simply need to go into our Buildcraft folder here and our config folder, and that's where Zelda's additional pipes config file is. We can see the chunk loader ID is 254. I've discovered that 195 is an available block ID with this set of mods. It may not be the same if you're using anything different. So you'll need to do a little trial and error, or use the ID resolver mod. So I've saved that config file, and I'm going to launch Minecraft again. Let's see what happens this time. Hopefully we won't have an error, and we'll know that if we get to the main menu. And we did. And when we look in mod loader, you can see there's probably no errors here as well. Everything looks good. How do we know that everything's working properly? Again, that's why we use TMI. Now you don't want to use the same world that you created earlier. This world was built before the mods were installed, so none of the tin, copper, uranium, and all that other cool stuff that the mods add are in that world. So you'll need to create a new world again. Let it generate the terrain. 
and things are starting to look good already. If we open up our inventory here, you'll see the number of pages we have in TMI is much larger. And we've got stuff like Railcraft, we've got stuff like Buildcraft, we've got Industrial Craft toys, we've got Red Power toys, and all that cool stuff that we've just installed. Uh, we should have some wireless redstone stuff as well. There it is down there. And everything looks to be working properly. There's some equivalent exchange stuff. Excellent. Now you probably want to run around your world for a few minutes and make sure that the world generation stuff is working. You can tell if you find some oil spawns or some uh, red power trees, some build craft trees. Just look for anything that's, uh, you know, not part of vanilla Minecraft. If we look in the distance there, we can see some red power 2 trees. So we know that the red power 2 world generation worked. Excellent. So we're pretty much done. We've installed Portal Gun, Build Craft, Craft Guide, Equivalent Exchange, Forestry, Industrial Craft, Rail Craft, Red Power 2, Wireless Redstone, and Zelda's additional pipes. We've also got logistics pipes here from Craft. So we've got a whole bunch of cool mods all working together. Um, now, I'm going to be starting my Let's Play soon, and I'll be using all these mods for it, and I might be adding some things in the future. I might need to add some of the IC2 add-ons, like uh, advanced machines and that kind of cool stuff. So it's basically going to be a work in progress. Um, as I add mods to my world, I'll mention to you guys if I had any trouble with ID conflicts or whatever, so that you guys can also install these add-ons and other cool things. So this is Direwolf20 signing off. I hope you guys uh, managed to get all this stuff installed properly like this, and I hope you enjoy playing with all these awesome mods. So take it easy.